Hey guys, what's going on? Jimmy Al here. Welcome to Wayfinder Wednesdays, episode 15, where we're going to go through this video and the stuff in the Discord from the stream I missed. Thank you, Sorrow-san, for putting it all into a nice, congestible, like, pile of text that I can read through and get to the key points in, because I didn't have time to watch the stream. It's currently 2 o'clock, and I need to get this all done. And I found out I recorded with the wrong microphone, so now I'm going back to do it again. So let's just get this video going. Howdy, the journey to get here has been long, Hi, Alex. but your continued support has meant the world to us. With every new player in Evernor, it meaning so much to the team and the future of Wayfinder. Our vision for Early Access was to craft this game alongside you for the long haul. Yeah. Which, you could argue they've done a decent job. Any bit of criticism we've levied at them and thrown, they've answered and tried to make changes around... We said the microtransaction was scummy, and they apologized and said that they didn't realize it and tracked it back to make it make more sense. We said characters are under buffed and doing little damage as well as weapons, and they've gone and buffed them and changed them accordingly. We've said that mats are terrible to grind, trickster coins are awful to grind, bones are terrible to grind, and they turned around and went, we will fix that, and they've done it. We've went, helper queue is pointless, there's no reward from doing it. They've turned around and gone, don't worry, we've sorted it. They've done really well. you got to give Airship Syndicate props when they deserve it. They do deserve it here, they've done really well at that. Yes, we absolutely hit a few bumps at launch, and there is still a few bumps plenty is for a us fucking to do. Understatement. But our team remains dedicated to making Wayfinder great as we work towards free to play in 2024. All right, Grendel looks weird. I think I think after watching the video now and having time to sink in, I think his design is great. I think his head is too small to his body, and that's what's throwing me for a goofy look. His axe does look sick though. I think his head is just too small for his body, and it's throwing me for a goof loop. With every passing week, she Wayfinder however only gets better. So close. Better. So close. Better. I can do this. I, I can do this. I can do this. I just want to arms better. down. There. She looks very typical assassin. And it kind of looks bare bones. She kind of reminds me of Nis, But stripped of all the cool. <laughs> like I'm hoping it's not the case. I'm hoping she's a cool character. Obviously I don't want them to release bog standard nothing burgers. It's just what it looks like. It just looks very standard assassin. So, it'll be nice to see what she does, though. We're currently focused on load times, performance, balance changes, matchmaking, and more on the immediate horizon. So, let's go back through that list real quick. We're currently focused on load times. Which is a big need. Load times are terrible. They are ruining the game and making grinding a lot more difficult. Performance. Performance is another one. My performance goes from anywhere being perfectly fine to absolutely astonishingly dog shit depending on the day. It does need addressing. Balance changes. Balance changes again is another thing that does need addressing and I'm glad they're addressing these situations. Right now the meta is to just slam the same sort of echoes in trying to stack as much like of your stats as possible that you required. Instead of switching and swapping between and trying to match them between what you need, you're literally just running like six to seven of the same echo, and it is kind of a mess right now. Also, with defense stats just not being that much prioritized at the moment. Matchmaking and more on the. Matchmaking is the only thing I don't agree with on this list. Matchmaking seems fine. I don't take long to queue into anything, and helpers queue is literally 10 seconds. So, I don't agree with matchmaking being in this list of problems, personally immediate horizon as winter approaches we invite you back to discover new mysteries of Evanor during the chili even time is pretty fun i will give them that even time is really the fun the world is about to get a whole lot larger and faster keep forging past through the gloom wayfinders remember you can go it alone Wait, but we're I just stronger completely that is wayfinders. different keep forging past i miss the mount and the thing the mount get a whole looks lot cool he looks goofy i'm hoping that's not the final product because he is definitely not supposed to be jumping up and down like that and glitching through the, the mount i think the mount is generally going to come down to uh once you have it you won't be able to live without it uh, you're definitely going to have that situation where as soon as you have it and going to an area that won't allow it you're going to notice how slow you are and how crappy it is to walk without a mount faster Keep forging past this is the raid i don't care i'm calling it now this is the raid 
Uh, it gives me very Destiny 2 vibes. I feel like you walk up to it and the Vex come out and start shooting. It is definitely something completely different. The background is Anthem. The portal is Destiny. Like, I'm getting so many different vibes here. It's so cool. As through the Gloom Wayfinders. Remember, you can go it alone, but we're stronger together. I think it's a pretty good video overall. I think Alex does a... Alex's voice is buttery smooth, so you can kind of just listen to it no matter what. Shows off the two characters. Uh, that's where they talk about all the changes they need to make. And then shows current players that aren't playing the game about the Eventide event, which is good. Then it shows off the mounts, which is going to be fun. The new, what I'm calling, raid area. And then, oh my god, I didn't even know you could do that on YouTube. And then, you know, just the last bit of video to explain that we're stronger together. Perfectly good video. I think they did an amazing job for their end of year video. But over to the Discord to find out more about what's going on. Right, so this is the Discord. I have a pen because my recording software lets me do this. See, isn't that cool? Look at this. I can draw a smiley face. Right. So, reprioritizing. Repri this is interesting to me. Still getting reward towers. Good. Housing and monetization will be taking a back burner. Huge. Focusing on the game at hand is what should be the main priority right now. Monetization and housing should not be. They are just side projects. I mean, monetization, you could argue, is a big thing. Your game needs to make money. Every game is here to make that fucking sweet, can I do it? sweet dollar. You know what I mean? Every game is here to do this. No game is here to not make money. Except, like, the day before, I guess. It's there to just not make money. <laughs> right. This is also interesting. I like this stance, and I'll go into this later because it makes it seems interesting to me. So, never pay to win. Free, fair, and f fun to join in. Able to express yourselves without too much restriction. All huge statements. We all like to know that the game will be free to play. The game will never be pay to win. Pay to progress at the moment, but we'll get into why I think it's getting it's getting a bit dicey and shaky. Uh, having content feel more rewarding. This is needed. Pity mechanics kind of needed. This is the thing I don't like. So drop rates are being investigated, which is needed because I've said this for a while now. I think visages fucking suck. This thing here, these fucking suck. They are annoying. There's like a big fucking red X. They suck. It's not RNG. It's not bad RNG. You can sit there for hours on end and struggle to get them to drop. You can sit there for fucking days and just not have a single drop of the visage you want. Because multiple bosses, like one boss, can have two to three visages linked to them. So you struggle for hours, you'll get one out of the three, and it might not even be the one you want. No, that's insane. It's, it's really bad right now. They really need to look into this. They're saying the drop blades are looking correct on their back end, but like that means they need to change them for visages because they're just it's so bad. It's really bad. It, I don't understand it. Uh, game performance is a big one. Uh, this one, this, this fucker right here. Why is this in the list? These needed, right? Don't know what that is, but probably needed. Needed. Connectivity needed. Load times needed. Reduced number of load screens needed, etc. Probably needed. No, no one, no one cares right now. Get the game moving and working at a decent pace. Then put it on Steam Deck. Having Steam Deck there is just like a slap to the face to me because my computer can barely run it sometimes. Fuck a Steam Deck, dude. It's like get the game to run properly. Come on. Let's be let's be serious about this now. <laughs> Having Steam Deck there is just so maddening to me. Right. This is huge. Focusing on community feedback, which we have been vocal, and I am proud of everyone who's been vocal because we're getting raids soon. Mounts and new lost zones, as well as UI and quality of life. One of the things I don't like right now with the UI in particular is it's really hard to figure out what some uh, some of these are. Fuck, I can't say it. Just this necklace here, soul energy is converted from this trinket and flickers fire. If you scroll down, someone's asking where does this drop. Someone is saying it's a double solar mod on any lost zone. How in God's green earth is that enough information to figure that out? Same as the ring, the ring from fire it came, fire will fade. Apparently that's trip a solar mod and it's not in the game. That's our best guess. We don't know how to get it. 
I don't even know what this one says. The first flame and one day the final flame too. It's craftable. But how the fuck am I supposed to figure out? That means two. That means... No, that means two, sorry. This means three? How 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 are you supposed to figure any of that out? It's it's nonsense. Absolute fucking biggly boggity nonsense. They, they, they need to put exactly what it just means in a UI for quality of life change. Just be like, from fire it comes, and from fire it fades. And then have a little thing underneath it that says, any lost zone, tier 3, fire, solar mods, done. Like, it's not that hard. It's not that difficult. This will be linked, by the way. It's a website I use for all the accessories and stuff, all currencies and crafting and everything like that. It's all in here. So if you ever want to understand how you get these things or whatever, then this is the best place to come to that I found. So this will be linked down there. It's Studio Loop and it's Wayfinder DB. I think it's like the it's like the database and stuff. So yeah, I'll have this link in the description down below. They have what New World, Wayfinder, Throne, and Liberty. Actually, Creation, Darker and Dark. Dark and darker. So it's interesting to see all that stuff. Anyway, back to the Discord. So I think that definitely under UI and quality of life needs looking at because some of those just don't make any sense. This is just business stuff like the company and whatnot. I won't go into too much detail here. But uh, pretty much free to play won't be in the first half of 2024. But they're still pushing, which is interesting because I thought that was going to get a 2025 pushback honestly the fact that they're still going for 2024 is actually amazing to me uh they're still looking for a publisher and they have an emergency on while they're away for holidays then this is uh i don't know who these are i can't lie I, I i'm not too much in to like the devs and communities aspect of the game at the moment i'm still trying to learn names so i have no people like lead product producer matt is fine the awesome engineer and the combat cam com i don't know who these people are but uh this guy is sprouting all the information i care about right now no end game content correct raids needed require six people now in my video that i did have up that was going to go out before this one but this all dropped so i thought this would be a better video I was going on about raids uh, 20 to 25, right? 2020 20 20 to 25, man. Some games have 30. Uh, some games even go 50, which is ridiculous. But our closest game, you would say Warframe, but it doesn't work the same. There's no such thing as raids and stuff in Warframe, to my knowledge. It's not that kind of game. Closest game we have is Destiny. Destiny has three man dungeons, right? Three man dungeons. That's supposed to be a D. That's three man dungeons, right? Okay, you know what? That's a free man dungeons there right and then it has six man raids so they've literally gone with the destiny two row things which is fair enough it's probably the best i said anywhere between five to ten so they've gone in my direction of five to ten and there it's going to be very hard that's good i like that it needs to be Planning to come out after archetype and armory level, which we'll get into this in a minute because this is where I'm getting iffy. Uh, decide around venturing into maybe free awakenings worth of power, but isn't required. Skill can bridge the gap. We'll drop cosmetics and high level accessories. This was the part I'm kind of interested in. So, right now, my father process for the raid was very simple it gives highest tier weapons. So, I think we're on tier, so tier four. So, it would give T5 weapons, right? Or it would give accessories that were legendary so i'll give leg that's not how you do it give leg accessories right uh, that was my plan Leg legendary accessories are t5 weapons or both you could do both you could join the two together right you could do the two together that, that was my plan but putting cosmetics in there good idea anyone who manages to pull the raid off and get the drops can show off that they did it with the cosmetics definitely a cool idea now my problem is what high level accessories mean because it's all right the accessory being high for example it could be like for example i don't know i think we can get to 33 power level at the moment like level requirement accessories i think is where we can push at the moment 
so even if it is 40, if the if the thing on it sucks, is it really worth having? It's going to be interesting to see if the set sucks on it. So let's say it's a just an average free set. An average free set, and it's something really bad. Like, for example, the free set is... Uh, health, defense, crit. That's not very good. No one no one really needs these two things at the moment. Those two things aren't needed. This one kind of is. Health and defense is not really that sought after a bonus at the moment. So, like, does that just make the item worthless? No point doing the raid because that's what you're going for, and it sucks. Is it going to be very stat-reliant? Are legendary sets going to be better? Like, for example, right now, the sets go 5 10%, right? So what do you, do you then have legendary sets go 10 to 15 Is that something you do? Just to give them the power over the other sets? Because it would be very sucky if they give the exact same stat bonus, because then, unless the item level is much better most people are just going to go farm the easy stuff that it's just easier to get if it's not much better like it's all going to be dependent on this the saddened part is i wanted them to do legendary weapons so for example like for a shotgun you could do a double barrel instead just change the weapon entirely and have a double barrel shotgun that does like double like the, you know does double the damage of the current shotguns you have now but it only shoots twice well you know what i mean like it would be cool to have something like that but they've gone for cosmetics and level, level, high level accessories you'll be able to queue for the raids which will be interesting teamwork will be important although it won't be required to have certain builds this is interesting to me because it boils down to how elitist is the community gonna get it's for example right firebomb silo is not a build like firebomb silo at the moment is not a build doesn't exist but like if i took that into raid would people let me in or would they just kick me would i just end up getting uh, jesus would i just get getting end up getting kicked because i'm not using a meta build you know what i mean like how how toxic a pub's gonna be just because you don't have the right build right this one i don't really understand gameplay weapons and weapon skills will be tied to raid i don't really get that it's confusing to me i don't really get much of it it's confusing. I don't really understand what that means. Mythic hunts are a big thing. These seem cool. This means boss fights are going to be hard. That is good. Uh, yeah, super hard hunts. Risen the cap to awaken five. The materials come from these. So this is where you're going to be farming your materials from. It's come out just before raids. So you have time to actually get them before a raid comes out. Maybe expeditions in the future. I think this is fine. I think boss fights, like boss fights right now. Oh, Jesus Christ, that's not nice. Boss fights right now are, like, the thing for Wayfinder. They're, like, the coolest thing Wayfinder has going for it. They have some cool bosses. Right now, they're just weak. Right? They're just weak. So how do you make them strong? Simple. You just increase all their stats. Just all stat increase. And that should fix, like, the majority of the problem. Have them not take 100 bajillion damage from you while also not allowing you to tank all their stuff. Pretty simple stuff, right? So that should be interesting. I don't think it works in expeditions very well. I think it would fail extremely in expeditions simply because how it would work. The stuff that right now currently already one shot you in an expedition, I don't really think it's needed. Uh, the affinity cap will be raised to 25 with the third affinity point. You'll need the black, black gloom stones to reach it. Just harder, no new mechanics. And we'll also drop cosmetics, which is nice. Uh, that's going to be interesting. I don't really know what an affinity cap is, but I think I'll learn that as I go. Now, this is the stuff that is getting a bit worrying to me. I'm not a fan of how they're presenting this. So, armory is going to be huge for leveling new weapons. It's going to make weapons stronger no matter what you're using. Every time you get a weapon to 30, the armory will go up. As your armory level goes up, every weapon gets stronger, not just the one for the same class. The problem with this is, is that we're saying the game is not pay to win. And I don't think, just for a second, I don't think this makes it pay to win. Not saying that. What I am saying, this 
increases marginally. Like if I if I draw a graph, right? Draw a little graph, right? We were like here on the old pay to progress, right? Eventually, free to play players meet here very quickly because it is simple as they buy the weapon, they get a level 30 first, but then once we're level 30, we're all caught up. It doesn't matter what weapon they're using, we are all caught up. Now the pay to progress kind of goes like that before it evens out because of the fact that they bought a weapon, 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 they bought a weapon. They they just level them. We get the mats. Fight the boss, get the mats. So we're going like this. And then we spike, and then we're going like this again. Well, we get the mats for the next weapon, the gold, and then we go like this, level, and so on and so forth, until like slowly but steadily, you would just go like this, pretty much until you reach the top with these guys. Like, it's not, you're not gonna hit the fair point very quickly anymore just because of the fact that they can just buy the weapon and get a permanent damage increase from it from just being able to level it so quick it's not pay to win but it is very aggressively pay to progress because at the moment it is literally go grind the mats or buy the weapon but the buying the weapon only gives a small advantage now it's going to give a bigger one it's going to permanently increase damage it, it's kind of insane this to a broader degree is the same because archetype depending how all this archetype leveling works is even more disgustingly annoying because right now for example leveling a character that's new for example uh let's take v v venomous let's not call it ven i guess Take Ven, right? That's 15 coins, 15 bones. To like, uh, the beginning characters, I think, were like either 5. That's not just. Which, how am I doing a 5? 5 or 10. Right. I'm pretty sure they're on the lower end of 5, though. Right? So, it, it's insane that I've got to do this for every character to get their archetype up. Unless I. Because Ven would go to my silo, which means I would need her level to, to level 30 just to get the points. So that means 15 coins, 15 bones. Then when the next character comes out, I'm either 20 quid or grinding 15, 15. It's, it's questionable, you know? For like actual buffs and bonuses. It, I, I'll have to see how much of an impact it plays out, but these two are getting very, very close to being aggressive pay to progress. But I would like to know your guys' opinion. Do you guys think this is this is worrying at all, or do you guys think I'm just overreacting? Because I'm, I'm prone to overreacting, so I wouldn't I wouldn't be the first time I did that, right? Do you guys think this is fair, or do you guys think this could pose a problem to the free to play community as a whole? Because I have character coins, and it's a, I feel better that I've saved them. But I don't feel like I can use them, like, willy-nilly now, because I want to save them for the archetype level. It's going to limit me wanting to try new characters that don't go down my archetype. Th that's just my opinion on it, especially for newer free-to-play players. This whole system, and this whole system... Is going to be very very off-putting not being able to just use the weapon you like is a negative because you got to use other weapons to get the armory up right depending on how big of a role it plays into getting to the end game right so that that's a negative archetypes let's say you start with this you don't like this are you going to waste the materials to craft silo to find out you don't like silo because then that's another waste of coins and stuff and then you'd have to go craft a war grave to get another defensive guy so that would mean you're two crafting materials down and if you don't like any of those you've completely wasted everything you find out you just need to go back to this and this is your favorite well now you're behind on the archetype leveling and you've got to go all the way back to square one to stop buying anyone that is an assassin I don't know. 
it, it, it puts a lot into the thinking cap. I'm probably overthinking it, and I probably don't need to think as deep as I am into this. But if any if anyone wants to throw their thoughts and feelings in the comments down below, so I have some other people to bounce off and see how my brain is processing that information correctly or not. But further on we go. Echo Overhaul. This is kind of cool. They're going to shift into a catalog system instead of being individual. So once you obtain it, you own it forever. Getting more just upgrades it. Shouldn't be RNG. And it should just keep getting better and better. It shouldn't be clogging up your inventory. I like this. This is cool. It means I don't have like a thousand fucking loot goblins just sat there. Just because... I killed him a bunch of times. It's just going to be the one loot goblin that keeps going up and up and up and up and up until it's like the best thing it can be. Cool. Like it. And also, it's a good way to balance. What are they saying about balance? One of the current things right now is you just run the same thing. So let's say, for example, you you run a uh, blood letter, right? You run a blood letter. So all you do it is like as many as you can, you'll have like fucking four, five, you know, you have like five to six of these on your character at once because they do the best. It's like weapon power and brick power. They do amazing work. It goes so hard on certain builds. You have about five or six of these and that's it. That's like what you're gunning for. Or like the bear, for example, another one that you're trying to gun for. This is going to have to make you work around that and go for one and try and fix it, fit it in with the other. It's going to be interesting and I can't wait to see how that all works out. Right. This thing. Weapons. This guy likes his great swords. Subclass of weapon types that don't currently have it. Twin strikes and guardian weapons. I have an idea for this. I don't know about Guardian weapons, though. That would be interesting to see. But, like, for Twin Strikes, for example, you could do... Dual Grids. You could do Dual Curve Swords. That would be cool. I would take that. Or just Dual Swords in general. But Dual Curve Swords would be my go-to for Twin Strike. Guardian is weird, because it's right now it's used as defensive weapons. You could go many ways with this. They'll talk about spears. You could do, you know, sword and spear. Not sword and spear. Spear and shield. That's one of them. Spear plus shield. Uh, you could do... You can do mace and shield. You could do... See, it, it mostly just boils down to shield. I don't really know defensively what else you could use. The other thing is... Uh, you could try I know Dark Souls has double shield you could do double shield I guess would be another one uh, you could I guess theoretically have guardians get support-ish weapons as well so like a, a, a healing stuff Healing staff, maybe, or a, uh, you know, <laughs> something like musically buffing, like a musical instrument, musical instrument to buff the weapon and like buff the wayfinders around you. I'm not really sure how you'd go around the guardian weapons, but uh, the spear ones, tridents, gun blades. See, gun blades sound so cool. Tridents and spears are technically the same thing, and I've already saw about staffs and ones, so I think that is pretty much in the bag. The awesome engineer said he wants to he was told to make it like elden ring which is the mounts which i can see on this video that they kind of went for that can't swim it anywhere which makes sense you'll miss the mount until you don't have it which yeah kind of converts which quality i think i already said this on the video itself like you'll you'll notice when you don't have the mount how much you like the mount just be able to bunny hop not anymore mounts are pretty cool yep quickly translate from mount to combat now you like that and mounts will have cosmetic saddles and dyes, but they will not have dyes themselves, right? No reason for mounts and lost zones, yada yada yada. And arc light bar can calculate differently to make you go out and explore. Don't know what that means, but that's cool. And do, 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 do. something to do with send air buff when you pull, you get a combo. Karosh is getting a mini rework, which is interesting. 
about personalities and personas, getting skins, no gender swaps and stuff like that. Going to make the new user experience better for the story side. They're going to add new signature slots like shoes and belts for Nis and Silo. Now, this is just about art and stuff, and I'm not very that into all that stuff. New skins, weapon, gameplay content, revamps, and see everything get in the player's hands. But mostly it's just talking about how the art is going to get more personas and base skins and stuff like that. President Ryan does a good job of just rounding up everything that's been said. We need game needs new content. Prioritize bug fixes. Our actions are going to speak louder than their words. We're giving you all and listening to you all. Pretty good stuff. Oh, they did not mean to move that with that. Right, big things. Unreal 5 is happening. Good. Abilities and gameplay trailers for the new Wayfinders. This is needed. I want to see what Snowy the Snowflake does. Tony the Tiger. I don't know why I called him Snowy the Snowflakes. Pity, pity system. Sounds cool. Uh, I don't know what this is. Anything about the Frost March expansion on New Open World. I had never heard anything on this prior, so I don't know where they got this question from, but it's interesting to me. Uh, do, 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 do. Bigger houses mean nothing. This is interesting about the Corgi Mount. Someone said, will we get a Corgi Mount? They're saying they're going to try and stay in tune with the game. No wacky mounts, which I like, because as much as I love getting goofy and silly, it is very off-putting when like a game like Terra has everyone in bikinis and then everyone in a fucking convertible. No one should be whipping out their Mercedes Benz mid-fucking raid. So this is all good stuff. Pets is interesting. I like having pets come around with me while I do stuff. So them being able to do that in the future would be nice. Something about lifesteal runes. It's kind of interesting. Uh, heroic weapons not coming. This is kind of annoying to me. So they asked any weapons. One, katanas didn't get mentioned. Curve swords didn't get mentioned. Crossbows didn't get mentioned. Bows did, however, so did fists. Everything else, kind of mid, can't lie. Like, torches, just didn't get mentioned. Staff, not a word. All these are cooler than the things they listed. By far, all cooler than the things that they listed. Hell, for you, like, do you want to go wacky with it? Whip. You know, hand cannons. Hell, cannons. I said this in, like, my wants. I want a character that uses cannons. as like, his main weapon is a cannon. I want this. You didn't even come close to naming it. You got, you got bows, and that's it. Cannons, please. Buffs to the long shot. Not in anything interesting to me. And then... This is another one, and I'm still not a big fan of it, but at least they're going to try and move away from it a little. They're going to try and move out of the rotating store. Now, with this, I think something like card or the finals does it the best, right? Where they have it so there is a rotation on the store. So, like, down here, I'll draw it. They'll do a rotation on the store, so the store will look something like that. Right, an item, 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 and then you can click one of those and whatnot. But the good thing is, if you went to the weapon, for example, if there was like a fucking cool ass shotgun, like so, if you went to that shotgun right there, put a little barrel on it, like that. if you went to that shotgun there, you could go to skins over here, and it would let you select any of the skins that it has for purchase that have been in the game. I think that's a cool way to do it so that you can show off the skins you want to show off but not have them all in the shop at once being overcrowded and stuff i think that's the best way to do it uh and i think this is where it boils down to not much is said uh magical guild skin is something i want xbox version sometime in 2024 Fox Finder, Dwarf Finder, we've only seen a small portion of what's to come. Non-humanoids and humanoids, it'll be awesome to see some stuff. I'm kind of hoping I get a dwarf. I'm hoping I get some cool-ass looking characters. Summoner on Necro. That has been discussed a lot, and it should, because it's like it's such a cool thing. Having pets, even like a hunter that has a, like a little pet. Like Normally, the hunter has like a crossbow. I'm not very good at drawing 
crossbow. This is the worst crossbow I think I've ever drawn in my life. Crossbow, and then the pet. Alright. Mm. Jesus Christ, I don't know why we let me draw our pet. This guy is named Toby. Shoot him, Toby goes in on him. Like, it's like, it, you could even do it that way, and that's fine. Just anything with a pet, something to build, you know I'm gonna love it. Grendel comes at the beginning of 2024, and fishing gets added. Now, like, the biggest things for me and stuff, there's some bonus items, like, there's a picture of a thingy, it looks fucking awful, yeah. There's Grendel's, like, artwork, and I think that's it. And then there's them doing the bug release. There's a table of contents there if you want to, like, actually click on it. Every time I say this, I'll say it again. The, the link to the Discord is always in the description because the devs are always here. And that it's the easiest way to get in part of the community and get involved in anything. But, uh, yeah, uh, that is all of it. My biggest two concerns. And, like I said, if anyone wants to talk to, like, put in the comments about how I've overfunk this and it's not that big of a deal, please do. This is just concerning to me with the amount of money that you can sink into it. Like, the more money you put in, the more weapons you get, the more power you get, the quicker you get it. The power spike between free-to-play players and pay-to-play players are just astronomically getting further and further apart. It, like, like I said, it went like that, and now we're looking at, like, that on the power spikes that they're getting. And it's, it's only going to go up and up and up each time a new player joins the fray and there's more items, right? The more weapons they put in, the further these guys go up by just buying it. And the further the new player who's trying to play free to play has to just jump all over all these hoops here to get there. So, I don't know. I just, it would be nice to get someone else's opinion on it. I'm, I'm not... I'm very stuck in my ways when I think of things, and it, it, it gets stuck in my brain very easily. Uh, so any any input on this would be highly appreciated because I just don't know how I feel about it. Archetype level and armory level. I think they're a cool idea. I think they can just be very much aggressive, pay to progress, and that's where my stand on that. Mythic hunts and raids sound awesome, but until the next one, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.